Um, let's let's get into what's going on. So, mere seconds before clicking the play button, Google Stadia has shut down its internal studios, changing its business focus. Uh, I was getting worried after they continued to survive way longer than I thought. And the last time I brought this up, I was like, okay, what the fuck? Why won't you die? I got money writing on this. And uh, it turns out that uh, I was but a week or two early. Common sense has finally hit Google. Um, yeah, I honestly, like, I continue to say this. So, the, 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 the uh, let, let, let's get to the announcement. Basically, um, looking at this Kotaku article on it, and uh, there's a studio in Montreal, there's a studio in Los Angeles, neither has released any games yet. Uh, there's around 150 developers uh, that have been uh, involved, and they're going to try to find those developers new roles at Google. Uh, Jade Raymond uh, was uh, actually there. Oh, interesting. I didn't I didn't realize Jade Raymond that was was working over there too. You um, did. Did I talk about this and already? That's my favorite part of the story. Did you I talk did about that? No, that Jade Raymond worked there. Did I forget? I must have You forgot. forgot because we covered a story 1 year ago where they describe opening up the Montreal studio headed by Jade Raymond. Oh my god. And we had a discussion about what it must feel like to work on a game that you 100% know will never come out. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's gone. It's that that I put that save on the cloud. <laughs> so that memory has been completely uh, erased. I met her. Uh, she was like one of the last people I met before this whole lockdown thing happened too. Um, really? I met her at the dice, dice of it, and she was still with Google. We were both on a panel together. She was rep she was representing Google. Okay. So uh, doing that anymore? About, yeah. Well, talk it, about the great future of Google and everything in state in Stadia. So. So it looks like a very nice. Of I was super glad to meet her because you know Jade is was part of the 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 the, the initial run of Assassin's Creed, you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so it looks like, um, uh, yeah, most of the 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 team is gonna move into other places at Google. Uh, she's gonna exit the company, so uh, she will be going elsewhere, and uh, Google will continue to operate the gaming service and its ten dollar monthly pro service. Uh, so. It will continue to exist in some sort of zombie form, uh, but I guess the uh, new developments and actual like push of the the brand are over, quote unquote push, <laughs> push. Um, so I, I I said this uh, a couple times now, and and I and I'm gonna say it one more time here. If this project existed as a simple Google Lab thing, where it was sitting in a place with no expectations, uh, not really looking to get into the commercial space at this point because they're still figuring out the ins and outs of it. And it was like, hey, Google's checking out this idea and possibly considering, like, um, you know, making tech that, like, could be useful in the future for whatever purposes. It wouldn't have had this stigma around it. The energy around it comes from coming into this space and kind of looking at it and going, yeah, consoles are over. The cloud is the future. Um, and that really weird last second announcement of like, we're going to introduce the brand and the name and some of the features, but we're not going to actually tell you what it is. Like the fact that the initial announcement was what is Stadia? No, really, what is it? For at least, I want to say a week or two? You know, before we started finding out what the details were, added to a very confusing uh, lifetime for this entire project that didn't have to be this way, really. I don't know. That's how I feel about it. It could have just you been a project. Right. I think uh, Facebook, uh, you know, uh, we all hate Facebook for many reasons, but I do think that Facebook has, has actually taken that approach. Uh, in terms of what they're doing with cloud gaming, uh, none of what they're offering is is, ch is charged. It's all free. It's all native to their feed, where you can just play the games within your Facebook app or whatever. And they're all low latency. 
uh, games that don't require a lot of uh, low latency. Um, there, a, a lot of them are mobile games, or a lot of them are just point and click games. Um, so that seems like a like like what you're talking about, Willie. About like we're just testing the ground. We're trying to see what works and what doesn't. Versus what Stadia did, which you're right, they came in not just as like we're going to replace a console, but then they the way they messaged it was like a console launch. They had a press conference and everything. You know, they looked at what. Microsoft and Sony does with with E3, and they just try to do the same thing, and it just and we're just like, well, so what though, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I I can almost imagine um, a timeline of events, you know, behind the scenes where maybe while this was in its experimental phases and they were kind of you know putting it together, there was a discussion point where they decided we could either be middleware or we can go our own route, you know, and. Um, a lot of companies these days are developing their own solutions. So, it, you know, if you're going to be middleware, you have to, like, stand out, he- like, leaps and bounds ahead of anyone else that could develop similar tech. But putting positioning yourself as a, a challenger in the generation with something that is just way too premature for people and, again, doesn't get around the ma- massive, uh, uncomfortable issue of, like, digital is still digital, but, like, digital on the cloud where you only actually get your metadata and you really don't own any part of it whatsoever especially if something gets delisted is not something you can hand wave and ignore it's a massive uncomfortable problem for asking people to spend their money you know and they seem to just be like no it'll be fine perhaps thinking that as we go forward into the future ownership over things that are digital will be less and less common so people will just get used to that but right now, we're certainly not. Yeah, it's almost like they wanted to do what Apple does. And it's like, we don't. We know that you don't know that you need this, but we think you might do. And then everyone's like, no, we actually don't need this right now. So, it's like... Yeah, I, I mean, there's a, a part of this where, like, even though, you know, digital, I remember when digital games first became a, a much bigger deal and, you know, PSP downloaded only games were a thing. Um, I remember being like, well, I like having the physical thing because I, I always want to be able to go back to it years down the line. And then eventually, you know, space and, and other things made it so that digital became much more common and expected. And Steam is just what it is. It's it, it's the way we play games now. But the fact that PT came out on PS4 and then got delisted, but I still have it on my console and I can still go boot it up if I wanted to in a world where if you have it on, uh, if you if you update or if you if you get it, if, if there's any opportunity to, Sony would take it off your console if they were allowed to do what they wanted. But mm-hmm. you still have it there it means you can still preserve things, whether you're offline or not. And um, the cloud being, you know, that mandatory extra step that keeps you away from actually having the offline game um, is just way too, it's, it's too far for me, you know. Uh, even if the mm-hmm. latency was half decent which it fucking wasn't as you proved <laughs> you know oh yeah 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 uh, in case people don't know i was the guy in the gif the when cd came out pressing jump on destiny 2 and going like <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> yeah. it's forever and i was i was on the work yeah, wi-fi uh, which which you know to be fair it's a very crowded network but you know the same thing happened at home too so it's like if i can't do it at home then then or at work then fuck know, it you know, yep i don't i don't want to play destiny 2 this way uh yeah. so I've been spending my time trying to find a photo of an old Stadia PR stunt, and I finally found it. Uh, and I will put it in the Discord chat for y'all if you want to take a goddamn look at it. And it perfectly sums up everything going on with Stadia from top to bottom. It is a outdoor exhibition of everything you dream can be built and it is the Dreamcast, the Power Glove, and a cartridge for E.T. for the Atari in glass. And then a, a sign that says, coming soon. Uh, and then a little blurb about the Stadia. And uh, eventually the person who built that exhibit came out and said that they had a really good idea and then Google changed their mind like three times about what the message of the piece was supposed to be. 
and ended up with like a bunch of bullshit that accidentally said that their console was going to be a fucking disaster. And that level of management nonsense, I feel like it was a perfect microcosm of everything that we ever saw with the Stadia. Oh gosh, this is a good meme template too. It's it's pretty good. good meme um, I remember when I, were they were they interviewing Phil Harrison when somebody asked them, it's like, okay, so the games cost the same amount as a regular game, mm -hmm. but what do you do when the servers go offline? And he just kind of just said, we think we're providing a great value with the online. It's like, didn't yep. answer the question. Nope. It's like, all right, shit's yep. over. Everybody give up. This thing's going to die. And a game got delisted the other day, and then anyone who owned it no longer owned it. And that was that, right? Like, we had that, we had, that That was the thing that came up. I remember, and then, like, uh, you know, Samurai Showdown was, was being brought up, but it was kind of like, oh my god, like, really? The netcode is bad enough as it is, now we gotta add an extra layer of input delay to me playing the game itself, then it has to go through the netcode, like... Oh, yeah, it's already rough on PS4 when I when I was trying to play Sam's show. That's Locally, right. yeah. Yeah. Now you're gonna play online and go through an input lag on your on your you know the to the to the game system server directly and then through the netcode after that. It's it's ridiculous, you know. Uh, if you can't even find a match for that matter, so. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's it sucks because again, it's just like you had ideas here, and I guarantee that we're going to be revisiting them in the future right cloud mm -hmm. is absolutely going to become more and more of a thing going forward but like this was just the worst way to roll it out and implement it and um it feels like they must have spent you know the money to hire people to be there and advise on like you know what the industry is doing and how the reception would be but kind of choose to just brute force through those reports and decide not we're just gonna do it anyway it'll it'll be fine you know we'll just we'll make heads head, we'll, we'll get out there and anyone who owns a, a chromecast will have access to it or if you own any device you can do it and it'll be fine I, I i got a code to load it up and i never even bothered like i straight up i try i started the process once by downloading the app and then i got to the like the, the fucking login screen or whatever. And I just went, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I have literally better things to do with my time right now. And I just stopped halfway through the registration. Like, yeah. And, uh, I play the same games that you already have or, or you're already tired of. That's the thing, you know? It's like, <clears throat> Fortnite should have been on Stadia. Fortnite would have been perfect for Stadia, you know? There you go. Right? Yeah. Um, it should have been free to play games on Stadia. I'm surprised that they didn't put, they didn't uh, go, go harder on that, you know? You know, and we've got contemporaries and like you've got other things that are kind of approaching this kind of thing. We talked about the Game Pass and how like Microsoft is doing that for people, with, which is just, you know, money for selection. Uh, Netflix of games, as it were. Um, it doesn't come up often, but Apple Arcade is legit. Apple Arcade mm -hmm. is a collection of games. You can play them on your phone and you can get a real controller and play them. You know, like stuff like that is is still happening here in the background and... and, and um, you know, it's not as much of a waste of time in a way. So, uh, it, it's, it's not. I, I use X Cloud pretty regularly, actually. You know, mm. it's it's I don't it's it's like having an X a mobile Xbox uh, uh, in my couch or in bed. It's kind of nice. So, um, this comes together, and I mentioned just before we started because, uh, like, I'm sure I said I'm like I'm sure you've forgotten it by now, but just in case you 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 guys don't remember. Never forget that the Amazon Luma has been announced. Mm -hmm. And that's Amazon's cloud gaming service that's mm -hmm. on its way. So right before the podcast started, Wooly said something similar to this. But he did not say the word Amazon. He just said the word Luma. And until you just said Amazon, I for the life of me could not remember what that is. The Amazon Luna is uh the new cloud thing that they're going to be rolling out and um the main difference here was well they showed the controller and then they introduced that there would be gaming channels that had their own rates so the luna plus channel 
is going to have you know their collection of games but there's a ubisoft channel that has a collection of ubisoft games specifically um and i'm just looking at it for example because I, I kept this page open because i'm like we're gonna come back to this you know uh, uh, uh this story because this is a different attempt um the luna plus channel is six bucks six uh, a month 5.99 a month and uh they have their list of games uh, with uh, 1080p, 60fps, 4K coming soon, it says. But then the Ubisoft channel was 14.99 a month to get Ubisoft games on the platform. So, depending on what games you want to buy for what companies, you're going to end up with multiple parallel subscriptions on the same service. Mm -hmm. I... It's really funny to me that no matter what uh, medium you're talking about, whether it be TV, music, uh, internet, and now game internet, I don't know how to describe this new one, the universal nightmare scenario that everyone turns into a photo is what if they took your thing that you liked and priced it like your old cable plan? The mm -hmm. universally reviled worst business model that everyone hates ever of pick this channel and this channel and this channel mm -hmm. and it always comes back like no matter how far you get away from cutting the cord they're trying to bring it to us like uh, online streaming for like netflix style shit has become that now again and now they're trying to do the online Amazon wants to do it to games? Oh my god! That however, fourteen ninety nine for Ubisoft games. Those however, games take forever to finish. It'd be a terrible deal. Well, <laughs> well there's <laughs> climbing. You get the one fucking... Creed Valhalla for like three months or something. That's about it. Climbing, climbing the fucking uh uh the 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 map tower to see where all the missions are and just thinking I have to do this by Friday, or it's gonna be another fifteen dollars. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah, dude, like that's <laughs> terrible. I mean, so the thing with this is you you're every time uh, an idea like this comes out, individual major companies are going to be doing what they can to secure their bag, right? Like it's not surprising to see that this is what the um uh, the model they came up with is. But you're talking about bringing back the cable after it's been cut. I guarantee you that uh if I were in the boardroom or if I were someone in the boardroom that were trying to push it, it wouldn't be the cable cutting analogy. It would be Twitch subs. Multiple people subscribe to multiple channels that they like. So why wouldn't multiple people subscribe to multiple game channels that they like? That's probably know? what Amazon's thinking. Yeah. And, and if a developer goes in harder on their library for this uh, platform, then there's more value because they're like, we're investing a lot of games into this channel. There's going to be more bang for your buck. So you're going to pay mm -hmm. that $15, but look how many games we've already put on it. Da -da 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 -da, you know? Yeah. I mean, I can answer that question right now because despite being called a subscription, a tip jar is not a transaction. It's a tip jar. Like people, people sub to my channel because they go, hey, Pat's cool. I'd like Pat to get a couple bucks. People aren't going to fucking subscribe to the Ubisoft channel to go, man, Ubisoft's doing a really great job with these games. I think I think they deserve some of my money. I think they did a great job with the the rape and the sexual shit. Oh, if, it's a good Ubisoft. If the games were free to play, it would be a more like the, the Twitch analogy. If they were, like, if you could, you know, but, like, yeah, the, the, the paywall idea is different from the tip jar. That is correct. Yeah, and Amazon did have that shooting game, which I covered, and I even called it was pretty good, and now I forgot the, its name already, um, but that closed down, but that was supposed to be free to play. Um, Crucible? Crucible, yes. Uh, the, it got unreleased? Uh, yeah, the game that got released and then unreleased because it was so bad and boring, um, you know, but I played like an hour of it, and I was like, this, this is fine, this could be fine, mm. so, you know. Yes. And it was fine, but like there's not there's nothing to to separate it from. And then so it's like, but if you got a lot of those, then maybe. But then those games, you know. Uh, and I realized that yes, I, I I work for the Washington Post, and Jeff Bezos owns us. But I can say whatever <laughs> I want. I can say whatever I want about Amazon's games, which 
it's like it, it, there's nothing. And, and so it goes back to what Google is trying to do and what Amazon is trying to do, um, that making games is really, really hard, you know? Yeah. And it requires a lot of time and a lot of investment, a lot of create, creativity that, that, that they don't seem to uh, be able to invest in. Um, they're just getting names, you know? It, they're just hiring big names like Jade Raymond or, or Clint Hawking, you know, in Amazon. Pro it's hoping wild that you can steer the ship. Yeah. So last week we talked about a story, which I think is now even more relevant because you're talking about Amazon and Google. Just going, we're going to get into games. How do you get into games? Just buy everything. Microsoft yeah. tried that. They tried to buy Nintendo. We talked about it last week. And oh, it yeah. ended with Nintendo guys just laughing at them in a meeting for an hour. Mm-hmm. And just laughing them out of the country, pretty much. And then Microsoft spent all the money in the world, and then all the money in the world again, and then all the money in the world again. And if I remember correctly, they still haven't made any of that money back on Xbox. Like, Xbox has never turned a dime of profit overall. And it's like, they've been at it for like 15 fucking years. And Amazon uh, and Google think that they can just go, ah, we're gambling. we can just get it, ah, we'll just buy a company, we're gonna crush it. Nintendo, I don't know what they're doing. Are you guys crazy? I you remember, dude, I remember when they, they got uh, Double Helix, not Double Helix, Iron Galaxy, when they acquired them back in the day after the KI stuff, and you know, it's like, okay, so we're losing them and we're losing KI's development because uh, Amazon wants to get in. And they were during the fire era of like, uh, uh, you know, their their development and nothing ever happened ultimately. So we still don't know what they were kind of up to uh, from that acquisition. But uh, the timing of this is quite interesting because um, Sh Jason Schreier just put up an article uh, why Amazon failed to break into video games. Interviews with 30 plus current and former employees point to one root problem. Uh, the guy in charge never made a game before. He hired veteran devs and then ignored them. So, oh, uh, this oh, just I've, popped up. I've heard that story before. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's... that that happens so often in like industries, even like even in the new industry. You know, like my old employer hired somebody from new, the New York Times to come and fix her digital shit. And then once she came in and then made this whole list of like, this is what you need to do. We just told her, no, fuck you. We're not going to listen to anything you say. And it's like, why the fuck did you hire me away from the New York Times for that? So like, I don't, I, I don't understand why like, 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 like decisions like that are always being made where like you're, 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 you want to value that person and you hire them. And then once they're in your system, you're like, no, you're going to do things our way. And it's like, well, what the fuck am I here for then? You know? Yeah. I don't understand why it keeps happening. It, it, ha it happens at Amazon companies that i've been in for cloud credibility for the ability to say that you got the right people in the room and I can you know tell you so exactly that when you're doing when you're doing the autopsy you know you can say that like yeah like the the people that know their stuff were here and they did assess the situation but if you're not willing to actually take what they have to say into in, into your plans and actually change the you know, uh, uh, your strategy, your business plan, whatever the case might be, when you're getting into a market that you know fucking shit all about, it's just going to be endless failure, you know, one after the other for like, yeah, practically a decade now. And 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 as you mentioned earlier, yes, we are, uh, <laughs> we're, like, we're using the same servers these games will be hosted on to criticize <laughs> the, the oh, Amazon yeah. product. <laughs> we're all owned by Amazon in this fucking room. This broadcast right now <laughs> is on the same servers. <laughs> uh. Uh, I know exactly why you hire people and then ignore them. Because you're not hiring people for their expertise. You're hiring people because you know you need experts and you expect them to come in and tell you that the way you're doing it is the right way after all. Mm -hmm. You're hiring them so they can come and tell you and go, you know what? You're actually a genius and you're running this as best as you can and there's nothing that can be done and all your critics are assholes. But when they come in and go, oh yeah, your shit sucks and you need to change literally everything and every idea you had is terrible... Oh, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Ah, I should never have hired them in the first place. Yeah, just Same fucking book, book, book a cameo then if you want people to say things, whatever you want them to say to you, you know? <laughs> Consulting. Yeah, well, they don't have the level of introspection to know that that's what yeah. they actually want. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean... You guys are doing great on cameo, you know? 
and and here's the thing too like uh internally inside of studios when you kind of uh headhunt or snipe superstars um it definitely doesn't hurt when you can announce that someone with this credibility has joined the studio and you let investors know that you know you everybody knows like some a project yeah. has some credibility behind it now because we brought in a name or or a resume yeah. that is you yeah. know respectable so it lends early confidence despite whatever a management's intentions are and in many cases um industries can be uh, uh hmm. I, I think there's a lot of t times where that sort of like uh bullet like that arrogance of like not listening to what your team is saying about a market will work out in that manager's favor in the past you know so there's no mm -hmm. real reason to uh, think that games are going to be any different when it couldn't be more different and it's also super um it's one of the craziest dynamic markets out there. It's constantly evolving because new tech coming out changes the entire landscape in one or two years, you know? Um, the, even though, like, generations of consoles have been rolling out uh, slower and slower, the amount of things uh, that have been changing about the industry in between those generations has never been faster, you know? So, yeah, I think it just... It, it's It's about getting in that that uh, uh early confidence because you have someone that is you know should should be able to say hey this person's here we're not going to fail but that doesn't and if you're public you can move the market that way to to, to 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 be in your favor right going back to to, mm -hmm. to the stocks conversation of course, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. um i yeah. i i wonder when let's take for example jade raymond right she's been in the industry for a long time she gets the meeting with amazon Sorry, no, Google. Christ, I can't even keep track. It, it doesn't even matter. She gets the, the meeting with uh, with uh, Google, and they, they do their pitch. And I wonder at what point she realized, oh, yeah, this shit's never going to ship. This is not going to ship for real. Like, this is a gig, <sighs> and I'm going to get paid. And then I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Honestly, man. And I wonder how many people in that studio knew that. Honestly, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in these circumstances are working to their hardest to the fullest with faith hoping the thing is going to do what it does you know um people like in situ like when you know management is incompetent it feels awful but a lot of people are like well i'm gonna still do what i can to save this and hopefully you know it can become a story of how it turned around despite the odds if anything you know it's not always the mental checkout you know, yeah, if you ever see me working at Facebook, like no matter what comes out of my <laughs> mouth, know that know that I'm absolutely just selling out, and I'm just trying to get that first year salary and like whatever investment uh, you can make. Clips. Whatever comes out of my mouth, do not believe me. Just that's good. I am selling out right now. I'm just telling you right now. All right. So all right, I have a I have a low tech version of this. I remember being the lowly employee I was at the grocery store. Yeah. Telling my boss, you got to replace these fucking freezers, dude. Like, they break, like, an overflow, like, every two weeks. And we and you got a guy on staff cleaning, like, mopping the floor literally an entire fucking shift. And, like, you, you bring in a guy, like, in the evening when the, when the employees are gone. And those guys are charging you, like, 300 bucks an hour to fucking tighten some bolts. Right? This thing's going to die. Ah! Okay, fine. Well, I'm going to punch out. And then day after day, and then the day comes when, at, like, half of the goddamn grocery store, every single freezer just simultaneously dies. And, like, 15 grand's worth of fucking food just gone like that because there's nowhere to put it. My, oh, Pat, you got to help us. We got to get this downstairs. Oh, oh, it's like, I'm, it's, it's 10.01. So I'm already late to punch out. Excuse me. Goodbye. Right? There's a satisfaction in watching management ignore you. And then yeah. watching mm -hmm. them burn. Mm -hmm. Because they just refuse to listen to anyone's good advice. And it I, feels great. I have a prediction. Again, Pat, oh, powered by spite. 
and being poor, right? Right, right. Yeah, dude. It's powerful, powerful fuel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a prediction. I think that um, because clouding, cloud is inevitable, and we're going to go through a couple iterations of it before it actually lands, I think that when it does work and uh, when we're seeing it at its best, it will not be in North America where internet still sucks. Oh, fuck no. It'll be in Korea. It'll be in Korea, Korea or Japan. Exactly. It'll be it'll be over in Asia where they have actual fucking real internet. And you're going to see it working there first and foremost. And it'll be a reliable thing. And from that, it'll be like, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's not going to fucking work out here in Comcast country. You know? It feels like they're just trying to copy whatever is going on in Korea without, like, like copying Korea's homework without even realizing that we, we don't even have the, the paper to write on here, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, it's like, like that, it's, it's, like, I think, to think about how Korea's recovered from COVID, my fucking dad is just going to billiards bars, all, all, like, every day uh, because it's, like, it's just so chill there because, like, every everyone there uses apps all the time, you know? Everyone there is really, really internet literate and everyone there is really connected. My grandmother, rest her soul, was ordering food, like, like 10 years ago, you know, like, on apps. And I'm like, this is amazing. I, I can't believe you guys have that here, you know? Yeah. We're just... North America is just really, really behind, you know? Uh, someone says Japan has exclusive streaming versions of games on Switch. Yep. You can play RE7 on the on the Switch, even though it's just a cloud version, and I've never heard anyone complain about it. It just came out, and you just wow. play it, and it's yeah. fine. You know, like I mean, like, it, <laughs> we're talking about, we're, you know, you're trying to switch... Uh, 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 the type of fuel in your car to another to something else when the wheels are still busted, you know, like internet still fucking just is garbage out 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 here. Actually, for, for these services to to compare your specific example, it's like, hey, you know, they drive this fancy auto car in Japan with the the made by BMW, and you go, wow, cool. You want to put it out in the states or Canada? It's like, well, they have fancy roads with like magnets in it that helps guide the car or right, some shit. Right, what do we right, got? Right, we got dirt. Got we got fucking dirt. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. it's the same, right? It'll totally work. No, no, it won't. <laughs> I mean, I I hang out with and occasionally co-stream, but like we'll watch. Uh, you know, we watched, for example, me and Paige. We watched Psycho Goreman with our friend Eli Plague of Gripes who is a fantastic artist, YouTuber, genuinely cool guy. You should check out his Patreon. And goat but like sometimes, herder, apparently. And yeah, he got goats. But sometimes, oh no, wait, that was a sheep. That was a sheep. Anyway, sometimes his internet just fucking fails. It's just dead because he lives out in, in rural, in the sticks. Yep. Right? And he's using satellite internet. That's the best he can get. Yeah. And there are days, like the ISP just goes, no, I know your job is the internet, but go to hell. Yeah. So and and so like here, let's hear hear the Stadia pitch for for him. You know, like what's the sales uh, rep gonna say? You know, like no, it'll it's fine. There might be some interruptions, but but you know, like it's just it's not fucking ready. You know, the, the like the... dudes roboting out in a Discord call, which is the least latency sensitive app I have. Discord actually does really well under crazy latency conditions. Mm. It's like if you can't even handle a Discord call, you're gonna be streaming what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that happened, and uh, you know, rip in peace.